Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to exciting afternoon of Chem 1105 with your host, me, Dr. White. Hi, everybody. All right. And thank you for turning on your webcam. I'm talking to real people. All right. My name is Dr. White, and I'll be teaching Chem 1105 this summer. Now, one of the things you should know up front is this semester, you'll learn a lot about me personally. And the first thing I should tell you, I'm an organic chemist. I got my PhD from Michigan State, yay, go good, Michigan State. And uh, I've worked in the chemical industry for many decades. Around 2001, the chemical industry unfortunately left Chicagoland left a lot of the United States too. And since then, I've been teaching and also consulting. And I teach at College of DuPage. I've been teaching at COD since I think 2007. So I've been doing it a few years. I also teach at Elgin Community College. I started there in 2001. In 20, uh, 20 in, yeah, 2010, uh, I won the Outstanding Adjunct Faculty Award at COD, so I might know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm not. You'll find out this semester. All right, now, important things about me. First of all, even though in my office, and you can see you're in my office at my home in Schaumburg, I have two big amplified speakers above my, right here, there's a shelf, but, I have bad hearing. Because I got the amplified speakers, I'm not wearing my hearing aids. But what that means is if you talk softly or if you talk with an accent or if you talk softly with an accent, I'm gonna have a hard time hearing you or understanding what you say. So if I ask you to repeat something, please be patient. Now, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is probably one of the most important things I'll teach you today. And that is, in my class, in my world, there's no such thing as a dumb question. I'll say it again. In my class, like this one, in my world, my universe, there's no such thing as a dumb question. If you don't know something, ask. Now, I was very fortunate. I think it was my third year in uh, grad school at Michigan State, I was in, my advisor was Dr. Roosh, who I will forever be grateful for, because he taught me how to become an organic chemist, being in his research group at MSU, getting my PhD. And we had a postdoctoral fellow that year, Larry Flavin. Dr. Flavin was a pretty great guy too. And this is a long, long time ago, as you can tell. But anyways, I was in our group meeting. I was talking about my research and I was talking something on the board and a certain reaction, Dr. Flavin asked me, what's the mechanism for that reaction? Which I don't teach in this class as higher level organic, like first semester, two semester organic for undergrads. And I told him. And afterward I went up to him and said, Larry, weren't you embarrassed asking that question? because we teach that to undergrads, that mechanism. And he looked at me and said, why should I be embarrassed for asking a question? I didn't know it, now I do, thank you for teaching me. And at that point I started realizing, and I came up later on with my own phrase, there's no such thing as a dumb question. I don't know why, but in the last number of years, students always apologize for asking a question. You never, ever have to apologize for asking a question in my class or in my world. If we were on campus and you ran into me, which I haven't been on campus for a while, but if you did, or if you saw me in a supermarket or wherever, and you can feel free to always ask me a question. All right, by the way, I have my list of things to talk about today. All right, now, let's talk about an important thing you should know about. 
And let me log into this. All right, this is Blackboard. You should all know how to get the Blackboard. If not, go to Google or email me and I'll send you a link. And on courses, because I'm only teaching one this semester this summer, here is, and let me go to student view for a second. Because what you saw, don't look, don't know you can look. Oh, by the way, I should warn you, I have a sense of humor and I use it. Sometimes we have good humor days and sometimes we all have to suffer through my humor, including myself. Now this is Blackboard for 1105 and you'll notice we have announcements. And on the left here, I have syllabus, Zoom meeting information, the link that's in this announcement that was sent to you. And then my YouTube channel, I'll talk more about that, assignments, course information. And if you notice, like I've already pointed out, I'm a little older than some of you, like all of you. Uh, should I should tell you, yeah, I got my PhD in organic chemistry from Michigan State in 1977. So I am a little older than some of you, like all of you. And I have a list of favorite music, movies, and books. My claim to fame, I saw when I was senior year in high school, when he was in Chicago, I saw Jimi Hendrix live. Probably the best concert I ever went to. I also saw Gracie Slick in the Jefferson Airplane. If you don't know who those groups are, go to YouTube, look at my list, and listen to their songs. All right, now, If we go to syllabus, you'll see I have our syllabus, which you can download. And also I'll talk about the signature sheets. Now, the other thing in Blackboard is the assignments. And this is an area you should be going to. Speaking about going to, let me take a break from this for a second. Because we're a net class, internet class, you should check your email, student email, at least once a day. I check mine twice minimum a day, usually more. Now, when I say twice a day, I'm an early morning person. Usually I'm up working by 5.30 a.m., 6 a.m. So I'll uh, check my email at the latest by 7 a.m. And then I also don't need a lot of sleep. I've done that my whole life. Usually somewhere after seven, I'll check it a second time. But I check it every day of the week, including Saturday and Sunday, twice daily, minimal. Always feel free to email me, but you should check your email also because I'll be sending out important information. Now, in the assignments, you'll be having various assignments you'll have to do. And you'll notice I have here the safety contract. And I'll talk more about this tomorrow, Tuesday and Thursdays, we do lab. And the first safety uh, lab, which is a safety lab. But let's get back to the right here, the indexer. And there's an area called course information. If you click on that, you'll see lectures folders, recommended problem sets, and recommended problem set answers. And in the lectures, the lectures I give, the notes for each or the screenshots you see for each lecture are there for you to download. I have them both as a Word file and as a PDF file. So you can even study using your cell phone with the PDF file. But the important thing here is let's talk about my syllabus. 
which you can download. All right, on the screen is the syllabus for this class. We go from today until the 8th, the 5th of August. Now on here, my name, I'm Dr. White, in case you forgot, I have an office phone number. That's really a voicemail box. I'm trying to think the last year I checked it. I think it was somewhere around 2015 or 2014. Don't call me. The best way to reach me is my email address, which is right here. Now, we're going to have lectures and lines and labs online on Zoom like we are now. And these are optional. It's a net class. I don't have to do this. If I wanted to, I could just say, here's my syllabus. Here's stuff for you to work on. Send out some emails. And guess what? That rips you off. Then I don't do, I don't rip off people. Um, something I should tell you, like I said, you'll learn a lot about me. Certain things, I'm a very selfish person. Yep, very selfish. And one of the most important things I'm really selfish about is I like to be happy. Maybe you don't, but I do. And one of the things that makes me very happy is to see students succeed. I get no pleasure, actually it hurts, to give out Ds and Fs. It means I failed my job and the student didn't fail their job. It makes me very happy to see students get As and Bs. And generally when I teach, if you follow what I recommend, and if you follow what I recommend, you can earn, and that's the key word, earn a very good grade in my class. Historically, my classes, whether I'm teaching 1105, uh, 1211, it's a higher level general chemistry at COD, or 1212 organic chemistry, generally I expect, and I do get, anywhere from 55 to 70 percent of the class, listen carefully, earn A's, but you got to put the time in, and my students do, and I help them, because I'm here, and part of my philosophy of teaching is I will help you any way I can to get the highest grade you're willing to work for, and my students do good. Last semester, I taught 1105 online on that class, and I think about 75% of the class earned A's. Now, some of the other faculty said, well, they're cheating and this and that. Well, I've taught 1105 face to face. And guess what? I've had classes where 70 to 80% of the class earned A's. <laughs> they weren't cheating on tests because they was right in front of me when they took it. My students do good. Yeah you follow what I recommend how to do good and put in the time. All right, here's a link for the Zoom meeting for our lectures and labs. They're on Monday, Wednesday, Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, every day of the week except Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. Unfortunately, something personal came up and I'll put out an announcement this Thursday, I'll have to change that time to 7 to 9 p.m. However, if you can't make it, I am videotaping all of these Zoom meetings. And I'll talk to you in a little while. I post those on my YouTube channel. Did you know I'm a YouTube star? No, not really, but I have my own YouTube channels. All right, now, twice a week, I have office hours on Zoom from 6 to 7 p.m. Adjunct faculty are not required to have office hours, but 
this allows you to ask questions privately, <clears throat> excuse me, privately. And here's the link and information for that tonight and Wednesday's office hours. Again, the best way to reach me is by email. I check it at least twice. My voicemail says once a semester. Actually, that's a lie. I think it's been at least 10 years since I've checked it. All right, now, all faculty are required in their syllabus to put catalog this, uh, description and what's called the active course file. And you can read that at your leisure. I'm not going to. All right. Here's the textbook. That's the last time you're going to see it in my class. It's a higher ed textbook, uh, but because I provide my own practice problems and practice problem answers, which are way better than the practice problems in this book, and my lectures, students don't buy the, the, the book. Last semester, with 70% or 60 to 70% of the class earning A's, and I think overall 90% of the class earned A's or B's, that's a chemistry class, which made me feel so good. Uh, nobody bought the book. You don't need the book. If you want to buy it, feel free to. Most of what I talk about comes from, is similar in the book, but I've changed some of the order because it doesn't make sense the way the order is in that book uh, for certain things. It just doesn't. Aren't you glad you have an instructor who knows chemistry and also has done chemistry in the real world? I hope you are. Oh, by the way, how many of you heard about me from RateMyProfessor.com? Give me a thumbs up. Well, you'll find out if it was true or not. It's true. It's true. But maybe it's not. It is. All right, let's get back to the syllabus. Now, you are required to get the lab kit. There's a uh, Department of Chemistry rule that you have to have the lab kit to get a D or better grade in this class. And I'll talk more about the lab kit a little. If you don't have it right now, tomorrow's lab, you don't need it. And I see someone have a question on chat. Oh, it was a thumbs up. One of the things on Zoom, even though I've been doing it on Zoom teaching since the pandemic, I forget to look at the chat. If you want, turn on your mic anytime to ask a question. Because remember, in my class, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Now, I've gotten a couple of students who have had trouble getting their voucher to work. If you have problems like that, go to the Carolina website and uh, call, get the phone number for their helpline. If you have problems, let me know and I'll try and help you. Uh, I didn't buy the Carolina lab kit on there you know, with a voucher. I picked mine up at the chemistry department about two years ago, or no, about a year ago. They used to use something else, which was awful. This kit we used last semester, and I was very happily surprised. It was pretty good. And the students liked it too. Unfortunately, it's not cheap, but then again, you don't have to drive to COD, so you're saving gas money. And here's how you redeem your coupon, uh, your voucher you get from the bookstore. Now, important thing you should need for this class is a calculator. And you can use any calculator that does scientific calculation, but I highly recommend the Texas Instruments TI-30X IIS is solar, so you don't have to worry about the battery. Um, either this week or next week, probably this week sometime, I will teach you how to use this with scientific notation. And since it's going to be videotaped, you can go back and watch it again. You need to. Or a second time if you really need to. But this is the best one. It's in my syllabus. 
They're about $15 a piece anywhere, any big box store. By the way, I don't get kickbacks, but I think you can get it from Staples, Walmart. That French store, as my friend always calls it, Target, Target, and all different places. And this one, I don't know how many years old I've had this, and it's built like a rock, and it's really a good calculator. All right, like I said, attendance is optional. If you don't come to the lecture, if you miss it, you can check on my YouTube channel. Let's go there for a second. Oh, I know that guy. It's me. And this is my 1105 YouTube channel. This is from last semester. You want to go back and look at, get ahead of the game. Now, last semester was a 12-week course. This is an eight-week. So the timing won't be the same. The lectures will be similar, probably even the same bad jokes. Yes, I recycle my bad jokes. And you can go back and notice they're by date and you can see week whatever. This one, here I'm showing how to do something with the lab there. And for uh, notice here, uh, February was week one of the 12 week semester. And you can see me being a wild and crazy guy. And these are available. Now, with my YouTube channel, generally by tomorrow, I'd say noon or earlier, I will have posted today's video for today's Zoom meeting on my YouTube channel, which you can go to and watch. All right, now, here I have the student behavior policy and academic honesty. I'll let you read that. You should have. Here's the official PDF file link. Here's some important aspects of it. You can read it on your own. I'll let you do that. But uh, I'm a really laid back guy. There are two things that make me mad. And you don't want Dr. White mad. I don't want Dr. White mad. And one is, people who lie to me. The other is students who cheat. And cheating is just another form of lying. And I will do what's in my syllabus. Unfortunately, over the years at COD, about four or five times I've had to do it where I've gotten the dean of students and the dean of math and science, my dean also involved with students I've had problems cheating. Now, you should prepare for the class, and I'll talk more about this in a little while. Now, this is very important. Do not raise your hand or say anything public now. If you are a special needs student, I have worked with many years now, and I totally support the Center for Access and Accommodations to help meet the needs of any special needs students. Contact me in private. And generally, you also have to send me a letter, uh, even kind of forward a letter that you get from the center about your special needs. I've always supported it. I always will. And my special needs students do just as well as my regular students. All right. Now, there is going to be four tests this semester. Each one's an hour. And I apologize, this is not the most exciting thing going through the syllabus, but it's important. And that's why I'm taking the time now to do it. Now, there are going to be four tests. Here are the tentative dates. If you notice, you're going to hate July. <laughs> there are a couple of tests, but this is, I've done this, I've taught this class more than once in the summer and other summer classes. And students still do good on this type of schedule. 
Now, the way I'll give a test is I'll post it in the assignment area. The morning of the test, I will send out an email. The test will be a password protected PDF file. You'll download that. I'll send you out the password and you'll have until the next day, 24 hours to take the test and upload your answers as a single PDF file. And I'll talk a little later today. I have a files how to, if you don't know how, and if you don't have a scanner, how to do a PDF file. Also, if you don't have a printer or even worse, your printer died, and that's happened to me over the years, more than once a printer dies. I've got a nice HP one right over here over my shoulder. Uh, you can just hand write out the answers on a piece of paper. If you don't have a scanner, I think all of you have access to a cell phone. Most of you all have your own cell phone, but you have access. You can take pictures and I have files how to do that, convert that to a single PDF file. Now, in those files, uh, a couple of years ago when we started in uh, online because of COVID-19, another instructor at ECC found out about this really great uh, app, Cam uh, Scanner, and it's a free, don't spend your money on the one you pay money for the extra bells and whistles, doesn't make any difference. And that also students have found works real well with their cell phone. All right, there's gonna be a final exam on the 3rd of August and at 9 p.m. I will send out the email, an email with a, a password for that password protected PDF file of the final. You'll have until next day, Friday, 1 p.m. to upload it. Now, the way I do uh, tests is the most of the tests, I think all of them are on Thursdays, the tests. I will, the following Monday, go through the whole test. But by that Monday, I will send you a personal email with the points you got for each answer on that test. And that way you can go through and see what the right ones are. And if you're not here in the class, in person for a Zoom meeting, I'll also post that as a Zoom uh, as a, in my YouTube channel. All right, well, there'll be one extra credit project near the middle end of the semester. Makeup policies, there's any kind of extreme emergency that you can document that I'm pretty laid back. Let's face it, life happens and I've unfortunately experienced like all of us, the good and bad of life. And I'm not one of those who's, oh, I got to be so strict that makes your life miserable. No, makes my life miserable, makes students miserable. I don't do that. I treat all my students with respect. All right, now what's important? How do you get a good grade in my class? Well, you're going to have four hourly exams and I take the three highest and add them together, get a sum. And that's worth 58% of your grade. There's gonna be a final exam that's worth 19% of your grade. And then the labs you'll be handing in, which I'll talk about in a little while, is 23% of your grade. Let me make it a little larger so you can see it. And then your percentage is calculated by the sum of the three highest hourly exams, your final exam score, your lab total points, and if you did the extra credit project, which is optional, that sum multiplied by 100 divided by 520 gives a percentage. If your percentage is 90 and above, you get an A. 80 to 89 B, 70 to 79 C, 60 to 69 D, and six, less than 60, 59 or less, you get an F. Like I said, last semester teaching this class online, I would say about 90% of the class got A or Bs. I think about 70% got As using this same cutoff. And I'll notify your grades and everything will be posted in Blackboard. And it will also your final course will be both in Blackboard 
and then COD is my access. All right, withdrawal. This is a student as uh, a number of years ago. Uh, luckily, or I should say gratefully, uh, COD took all withdrawal process out of the hands of faculty as with the dean and the registrar's office. The final day to withdraw from this class is the 22nd of uh, July. Now, I should say that historically, I rarely have people withdraw. The only reasons I've had people withdraw are one, I've had a couple students get pregnant and they withdraw because near the end of their pregnancy, even though I one time face to face, I had a student, we were all betting, will she give birth be during my class or wait until after the semester? And her daughter waited one week until after the final to give birth. But anyways, that or somebody gets transferred out of the Chicagoland area. This was mainly when we were face to face. They'll drop. And on a rare occasion, I'll have a student drop, but usually students do not drop my class, which I guess is a good thing. Now, over the years, it's rare, but it's happened. A student just disappears, stops handing, doesn't take tests, doesn't hand in labs. And that's not withdrawing from the class or dropping it. I'll take the score you get if you only took one lab and nothing else. That unfortunately happened last semester, and I'll put that grade in. But if you need help, always feel free to ask me. And if you need a com incomplete, and I've had a couple where students got very sick at operations, you document it, I'm more than happy to give an incomplete. All right, let's look at the tentative schedule. This is on page 13 of syllabus. Here's the schedule for each week. Here are the tests again. What I'll do is a couple days before the test, I do a review for each test. It's helps students and therefore I do it because I want my students to do well. And the whole last week, except for Thursday, I'll do a whole semester review for the final exam. And that helps students. I think that's another reason why students do really good on my final exam, because you'll have a couple hours of review with and me, Dr. White. Remember, everything I'm showing you on the screen, you can go back and look at and download the syllabus. Actually, you should. All right. Now, We'll be having labs. You'll be using the lab kit from Carolina. You have to purchase it. Now, this is the department rule. They started last semester. For each lab, you have to take a selfie with your cell phone holding some chemical or something from that lab and upload it with the lab to the assignment area. If you don't, you get zero points. And I do need the lab safety sheet and the distance learning uh, agreement by the end of this week, ASAP. And I'll talk about that in a little while. Now, your lab grade is worth 23%. Now, you're going to have 13 labs you're going to do. And I started this one, we were doing face-to-face. -face. What if a student gets sick and misses a lab? Should that hurt their grade? No. And so therefore, I will take the top 12 based on points of the 13 labs and add them together and that'll be your lab point total. Each lab is worth 10 points. And the way I do the labs are pretty simple. I don't want a 10 page lab report. Uh, when I was an undergrad, we had one TA who taught a lab if it wasn't at least 15 pages, you didn't get a good grade. So you started writing garbage down just to fill up pages. That's not teaching, that's not learning. And the labs are due the next lab session. If you don't hand in a lab, you get zero points. If it's late more than one week, you get zero points unless you have a personal reason. 
For those of you who are late getting your lab kit, I'll extend the deadline until once you get your lab kit. All right, here's the tentative schedule. And I talk labs. I'll be discussing them. I'm not going to say, do this lab and you're on your own. That's wrong. How are you going to know how to do it right unless somebody helps you and explains what you're supposed to be doing, which is what I do. And here are the different labs. And notice the last week, there'll be no labs, but we'll be doing review that last week, week eight. Now, let me say one thing about labs. Since COVID, and we've been doing stuff online last semester, it was really bad. Students don't hand in all the labs. Hand in the labs. They're easy points. I didn't say that, be quiet. But you got to hand them in. I had three people last semester who should have gotten A's but they didn't hand in half the labs. And guess what? They got seized. I, I kept on handing your labs. There's only so much I can do. So I'll remind you, hand in your labs. Now, one of the things I do is on the very last page, I have an example of it, but it's a PDF and a um, Word document that you download. It's called the Signature Student Agreement. And it's a, say, uh, a contract between you and me that essentially says, hold on one second, let me open up the actual one. Aren't you glad you got an instructor who's a Zoom professional? <laughs> Maybe not professional, but I know my way. You look in the assignment area, signature sheet. And I have here instructions if you don't know how to create a PDF file for labs and tests, both as a PDF file and a Word document. And I also have about Cam Scammer. If you don't have a scanner, this is a good app. Use the free version. Now on your screen, let me check it is on your screen. Last semester, Zoom finally put in a thing where I don't have to ask because it tells me one thing in the past and the students didn't see what I was saying. Now that's they've corrected that problem. This is the student uh, signature sheet. And you need to fill this out, upload it as a PDF file, print your name, and it says you understand the You've read the syllabus and you understand it's your responsibility to abide by my policies in the syllabus. And if you don't, I'll do the what's the consequences in there. Now, the other thing I have, because I'm recording this because of FERPA, and I forgot the acronym, Federal Something Something uh, Rights for Students, uh, I'm asking you to waive your FERPA rights so I can post the Zoom meetings, in case your picture's on the screen or something like that. Uh, by the way, I don't have thousands of hits on my YouTube channel, so you don't have to worry about that. I wish I did have thousands of hits. I could make some money. But anyways, I need this. If I don't have this by test one, you'll get zero. In other words, upload it. And that's my syllabus. Like I said, it's not the most exciting thing, but it's important to go over. All right. Let me, uh, the way I teach on Zoom and I teach face-to-face, -face, 
I've learned long ago that after sitting for 50 minutes, your brain shuts off. So after about 50 minutes, we'll take a five minute break. I can get up and stretch because my, otherwise my muscles start cramping if I sit too long. And then we'll continue. Now, let's talk about my golden rule of teaching. What's that? Well, I don't do to my students what I didn't like done to me when I was a student. And yes, I was a student in a galaxy far, far, far away, a long time ago, came from Star Wars. But anyways, can you see that? This is my undergrad ring from Illinois in technology, 1972. So yes, I was a student. And I don't like teachers who put things on tests that they didn't teach you. I don't like multiple choice, even though I do a few multiple choice questions, but the bulk of my tests are short answers or do a problem. Now we're gonna do some math. Hold on, take a deep breath, let it out, relax. Take a deep breath, let it out, relax. All the math we'll do in this class, I'll teach you how to do it which is how my students do good on my test with relaxed math problems. And they're also called relaxed word problems. In fact, I've had students tell me, I wish I had your class before I took this math class, because then I would have known how to do that stuff in that math class. So anything on my test, any question on any one of my tests, I have covered the concept behind that question at least twice, usually more. Repetition is good for your grade. That's uh, one thing. Now, let's talk about how do you do good in chemistry? Good question. Because, you know, chemistry doesn't have the best reputation around, even though chemistry is fun. Remember, I'm an organic chemist, I'm biased. I love chemistry, I love organic chemistry. That's why I got my PhD in there. But how do you do well in chemistry? Well, let's talk about bicycles. Bicycles? Yep, bicycles. Let's say you don't know how to ride a bicycle. And being the nice person I am, I am, I give you a copy of the best Blu-ray ever made on how to ride a bicycle. And you have, like I have downstairs in my family room, a big 75 inch high def 4K, I have a Sony TV, and, for, and you have a Blu-ray player or 4K player. And for the next month, you watch that video. You go slow motion, back it up, go frame by frame. At the end of a month or so, you know every frame on there by heart. What's going to happen the first time you get on a bike? You're going to fall off. But with practice, you learn how to ride a bike. Chemistry is no different. You can watch me do the problems. And I do do problems and practice problems to teach you how to do them in my lecture. But if you don't do my practice problems, which is why I created practice problems, guess what? On the test, boom, you're going to fall off. And that won't be pretty. I don't think you'll be happy and I won't be happy. And therefore, I'll remind you, do the practice problems. That's why I created them. So you can try this on your own, have problems with it. In lecture here, you can ask for help. You can come to my office hours, or if you can't make it to my office hours and you really need help, email me and I can set up a special Zoom meeting. But try and come to my office hours if you can. But you have to put do the stuff yourself. It's like a bicycle. You just can't watch the, the I was going to say videotape. Wow, that's old <laughs> VHS. How many of you know what VHS is? Oh, OK, you do. But anyways, that's important. 
All right, any questions? I've been talking all this time. Remember, in my class, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Always, always feel free to ask questions and always, always feel free to ask for help. I'll give it to you because I want students to succeed. I'm selfish. Hi, Dr. White. My name is Nubia. Uh, I received the, the kit from the Carolina book voucher thingy that we bought and I received the box and I'm not gonna lie I was stressed out because I'm like how are we gonna do these labs like there's right, right, right. so right. relax <laughs> now each lab what I will recommend one you do it in your kitchen two if you have marble tops and this is because I'm a chemist you go to any big box store and you know that El Cheapo aluminum foil yeah. For like turkeys, they're about two dollars, three dollars. I can go now to Walmart online. You can look it up. I've done that. And when we do the first lab on Tuesday, uh, Thursday this week, if you're doing any chemicals, you work them there. Now, I will go through the data lab how to do things. I'll show you. I may not actually move chemicals around. But last semester was the first semester we used them. The students had no problems with them. If you do have problems, ask me. The only dangerous things, there are a few chemicals which you should wear your safety goggles, and you do that anyway. And I'll talk more about it in the lab tomorrow when we have our safety lab. But they're really good. They work, they're easy to do. Now they're not, some of them are take a while, maybe take an hour. But if we were face to face at COD, our lab would go uh, two hours and 50 minutes per lab. In the summer, even the summer, we would have lab twice a week. Or sometimes they also do labs where we have two labs back to back and we spend all day from nine, six hours later, one, actually it's more than that, till two, doing labs. And I've taught that too. But the kit and in, you'll see each lab, they have a really nice instructions what to do. And I go through that before you do that in the Zoom meeting. And if you want, you can go back and watch the video. Does that lower your stress level? Yes, thank you. Now, I have a personal question. How do you pronounce your first name? Nuvia. Thank you. I thought so. I just don't want to, uh, how should I say, butcher anybody's name. See, I even believe there's no such thing as a dumb question. I just asked one. All right, other questions about what's going on? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Go for it. Um, so I ordered my lab kit, but it still hasn't came in. And I know there's a lab due this Thursday. All right, relax. <laughs> First, you're not alone. That's the right. problem with the, did the bookstore send you your voucher by US mail or email? Uh, I went in person and I bought it from Okay, the which is why I sent out real early, go and buy it. Mm -hmm. It happens. Remember, I'm a laid back guy. If you haven't gotten your kit, I'll give you extra time to make catch up. Okay, thank you. And um, if you need help, I will help you. Any other student too. Oh, by the way, when we're face to face and on uh, Zoom, I play favorites when I teach. All my students are my favorites. I don't pick one or any, they all are. All right, any other questions? I have another one, actually. Go for it. Um, so for the exams, um, we can print out the like PDF and then we can fill it out and then send it back to you as a- That's one way. The other way is you can print it out. Well, if you print it out, um, 
you'll make it into a PDF file that you send back with your answers. You can do that with a scanner like I have right up there. Oh, by the way, that's a picture from my all-time, all-time favorite movie, Forbidden Planet. You've never seen that with Robbie the Robot. You're missing a lot in life. But anyways, if you don't have a scanner, you can take your cell phone. And I think all students nowadays have cell phones or find someone or go to a local library. They have scanners too, most of them do. Or you can go on campus too. And then you upload it as a PDF file. Does that help? If you don't have a printer, just write on a piece of paper, not the questions, just your answers. And with your cell phone or scanner, make a PDF file out of it. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Any more? Remember, there's no such thing as a dumb question. And therefore, you and each of the other students, you should never, ever, ever have to feel sorry or apologize for asking one, two, or three questions. Now, if you can't get the answer, if I can't help you, sometimes I've got to move on. I'll say, see me after class, and we, I'll help you if you can't get it after a reasonable amount of time. And that happens. Or come to my office hour. All right, if I look at the clock, let's take a five-minute break. I can get up and stretch, and we'll come right back. So do come back, or as Arnold Schwarzenegger says, I'll be back. Nah, I don't do good impersonation. See you in five.
Let's get going. All right, welcome back, everybody. In case you forgot, I'm still Dr. White, and this is still Chem 1105. Well, by the way, I say you learn a lot of personal stuff. You look over here, something I got into about a year ago or got back to is uh, high-end flashlights. That's part of my collection. It's, it's really addictive. Uh, I got a number of those from probably the best place the person to get a flashlight from the world. This is gentleman Hank Wang in China. He's got a following throughout the world of about 10,000 people on a subreddit. But anyways, enough of that. Now, before we start the class, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you who asked questions. See, I really do answer them. And I really am honest about the fact there's no such thing as a dumb question in my class, in my world. Now, before we start our first chapter, why learn chemistry? Why should you learn chemistry? Let's think about it. Everybody, take a deep breath. Let it out. Remember to let it out. Take a deep breath. Don't stop breathing. Let it out. And go like this and hold your hand up in front of your face and blow on it. What you're feeling are molecules of nitrogen and oxygen. The air around us, that's chemistry. If you happen to drink some water, that's the liquid in here. No, it's not vodka or gin, it's water. I said I had a sense of humor and I use it and I do. This is water. Those are molecules of H2O. That's chemistry. This bottle is chemistry. It's made up of molecules. The hair I have left and my beard is chemistry. Your hair too. The fabric of my top. The material, that's cotton. That's molecules. That's chemistry. If you eat food, your food is made up of molecules. That's chemistry. And how it breaks down your stomach. That's chemistry. So let's think about this. The air we breathe is chemistry. Water that keeps us alive is chemistry. All our food is chemistry. And our clothing, our skin, our hair. So isn't it obvious why you should learn chemistry? Because somebody told you you needed 1105 to get your degree or get into a school or a program. I know that, now you know I know that. I know you're not here to become chemists, and I'm not gonna try and make you become a chemist or turn you into chemistry. But what I will do this semester is I'll teach you about my world of chemistry is really your world of chemistry, and you just don't know about it, and by the end of the semester, you will. And one of the good things, since I have worked in the real world, by the way, I have 10 US patents in chemistry of things I've invented when I worked in the chemical industry. So I know about chemistry really good. You'll learn about it in our practical everyday life. Oh, by the way, I have a homework problem, a homework assignment for you, uh, but you don't have to hand in anything. The next time you're outside and you feel the wind on you, Think about it. Those are molecules of oxygen, nitrogen, traveling really fast and hitting you. That's chemistry. All right, let's get started. And remember, if you're anxious about anything or nervous or have questions, ask. All right, on your screen, you see chapter one. What you see here is available that you can download. And I will tell you certain times things you should know. Now, I'll never ask on a test what's chemistry, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's still good to know. Well, it's to study a composition, what something is made of, the structure and properties and reaction related to what we call matter. Another way of saying that is 
Chemistry is a science that tries to understand how matter behaves by studying the good stuff, how atoms and molecules behave. Dr. Weiss had a lot of fun with atoms and molecules. They've been nice to me, I've been nice to them. But I'll never ask you on a test, and you've got it on the video, what's chemistry? Oh, I should warn you, I have the fastest mouse wheel finger, this side of the Mississippi and the other side of the Mississippi. A good question is, can you go back to the previous slide? I always will. All right, now when we talk about chemistry, there are four main branches of chemistry. Now, every once in a while, you'll see me do this. Hint, know this. Everybody get the hint? All right, the four main branches are organic chemistry. That's the best. Well, I'm an organic chemist. Inorganic chemistry, physical chemistry, and analytical chemistry. So on a test like test one, I could ask three points or two points. Name one of the four branches of chemistry. Organic's the best, but I'm biased. Now, I won't ask you, but organic chemistry originally started, you got the name organic, studying molecule, oh, excuse me, molecules that were from things that were alive, plants, animals, and us. And it's expanded beyond that. Inorganic, we're studying molecules from things that were never alive, like rocks and other things. Physical chemistry, is the study of how to measure or how to, uh, certain physical things, how atoms exist, how molecules exist. And analytical chemistry is evolved or deals with measurements of things. How many of you are familiar with the CSI programs on TV? The chemists there are all analytical chemists working for the police. In fact, one of the faculty at COD used to be an analytical chemist for the state police of Illinois. And his job was to come up with tests, how to measure things like how much alcohol is in this liquid, is this stuff really an illegal drug and which one, and things like that. But you should know the four branches of chemistry are organic, inorganic, physical, and analytical. And I even wrote, again, know this, because I never could read an instructor's mind. And I don't think you can read mine even if we were face to face. All right, now, when we talk about chemistry, we're talking about chemicals or sometimes called substances. And I'll never ask on a test, What's a chemical? What's a substance? But I like to define words I'll use this semester. And a chemical is any matter used or produced by a chemical process. Now, a substance, which is almost, oh, I'm going to use a fancy word now, a synonym. Oh, my English teacher from high school would be smiling now. But anyways, that's a chemical that consists of one type of matter, it always has the same composition and properties wherever it's found. Now, I use these interchangeably. I can say, and you don't think of this, but it's true, water is a chemical. It's also a substance. And you can use them interchangeably. But I'll never, ever ask on a test what's a chemical or what's a substance. Now, when we talk about chemistry, chemistry is the study of matter. What the heck is matter? Well, matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. And you should know this definition. I usually don't ask what's matter on a test, but still you should know it. But I'm not gonna write hint, know this. So matter is anything that has mass and, uh, oh, I got a personal question to ask. How many of you 
over the next eight weeks are going to be leaving our planet for any period of time, leaving the planet Earth. Ah, no one. So since that's true, and no, I'm not going to be leaving it either, you can interchange mass and weight. Now, some chemists would be yelling at me and say, well, gravity is, affects weight, but not mass. Well, if you're going to stay on the Earth, the mass and weight are going to be the same. So I will use interchangeably in this class the term mass and weight. Now, mass refers to the amount of matter present, which we call weight if you're going to stay on this planet. All right. Another thing I'll be doing is the following. Click. The switch is off. Will this be on a test? I could have done this before on a, pr a previous slide. But again, you can't read my mind. Well, can you? <laughs> no, you can't. And therefore, if I go click, the switch is off. That means I just want to do background to something, but I'm not going to put it on a test. Aren't you glad I do things like that? I am. All right. Now, there's something called the scientific method. And again, click, the switch is off. But you make an observation. You collect some data. And then you come up with a hypothesis, which is interpretation of your observations. Now, something I use a lot, and actually, I'm missing something here. Don't look. Now it's correct. I.e., that means in Latin, that is. Now, one thing I've learned a couple of semesters ago, and this is a generation gap, a lot of students don't know how to read cursive. And therefore, I print. Now, once in a while, I'll write something out in cursive. If you look at my list here, it's all in cursive because it's quicker than printing. But for this class, I'll try and print it. IE means that is the data. So you come up with this hypothesis. Let's say it were winter time out and I put this bottle outside my back door of my house. And the next morning I come back and it's not a liquid, it's a solid. And I could say, well, if the temperature is cold, the liquid becomes a solid. And then I could do some experiments taking water at different temperatures and looking, is it a solid or liquid? And then based on my experiments, I come up with a theory. And that is when temperature is below this level or this amount, the water becomes a solid. When it's above this, it's a liquid. And I can test it. And all science uses this. And as a scientist, I've done all this. All right. Aren't you glad I'm subtle? Subtle, huh? Man, know this. Now, one of the important parts of chemistry is the chemical symbols. Now, I won't ask you what is a chemical symbol, but I'll explain what you should know. Now, chemical symbols are one and two letter abbreviation for the names of elements. And I'll teach you later on what is an element because you may not know. Remember, everything on my test, I'll have described or talked about the concept behind that question at least twice, usually a lot more. So. Chemical symbols are one or two letter abbreviations for the name of elements. The first, or only the first letter of an element is capitalized, the chemical symbol. If there's a second letter, it's always lowercase. Oh, I don't have it open. Hold on. I always say that. Hold on. You don't have to hold on, but just be patient. You don't have to be patient either, but please do.
Oops. There we go. All right. This is the periodic table, and I'll teach you later on about the periodic table. And this will be a download. I don't think I have it yet up on Blackboard, but I will next day or two. This is the one I use for this class, and I've used face-to-face. -face. You can see this has been through the wars up here, a little folded. But anyways, this is the periodic table. The one you use doesn't have the name of the elements on there. Now, if you notice, on this is an older one, there's 103 elements. Guess what? I've been doing chemistry many decades. Oi, I shouldn't have said that. Does everybody know what oi, oi ve, oi ve smear means? By the way, I'm Jewish, and that's the addition. Oi means ah. Oi ve is a bigger ah, and oi ve smear is, oh, whoa, is me. But anyways, you'll learn some Yiddish this semester. This is the one you should know. Now, most of these I have never dealt with. And if I've been in chemistry, working in industry for decades, that means the odds are oh, most of these you aren't ever going to deal with. And some instructors make students learn all the symbols and names. LR, and I just haven't noticed because I pick on it, is Laurentium. I will bet all the money in my wallet, which is more than $100 plus my credit cards, and I have a very good credit rating, very big limits. You and I, you will never deal with the rent sale. I never will. By the way, I only bet when I know I'm going to win. So never bet with Dr. White, me. So I learned LR is Laurentium. It makes no sense. And because of that, I have come up with this list. These are, and I better be subtle again. Notice the larger font. Get the hint? <laughs> know these. And what do I mean by know these? You should learn the name and chemical symbol for the following 37 elements. These you do use in your daily life. Example, H is hydrogen. HE is helium. KR is krypton. Now, unless I've been kidnapped to another universe, in our world, krypton is a colorless gas. It is not a green solid that kills Superman. And CL chlorine. Now, let me show you something that's really neat. At least I think it is. <laughs> no, not Firefox. That's my favorite. Hold on. One of these days, I'll have to figure out who created this and sent them an email thanking. This is the neatest periodic table that I know of on the internet. And it's called ptable.com. It has both the names and the symbols and other stuff too, which I'll teach you about. But if you don't know the symbols and wanna learn the names and symbols, this is a good place to look at. And some of those I asked you to learn Na sodium, K potassium, and I don't have to look at this, but chlorine Cl, bromine Br, ooh, important one, O oxygen. My favorite one, because I'm an organic chemist, C carbon. And oh, let's go to the high rent district. Ag silver, Au gold, Cu copper is not high rent, but you know, gold and silver are very expensive, so are platinum. Ooh, that reminds me. A couple of years ago, and now I'm going to do a generation gap thing on you. I pulled up a stoplight, and the car in front of me had the following license plate.
H-I-H-O-A-G. It took me about three seconds and all of a sudden I started laughing and said, that person's cool. And that's hi-ho silver. And for those of you from my generation, the best TV program was the Lone Ranger. Now I have to say the John, recent Johnny Depp Lone Ranger was utter garbage. I only saw the trailers and no, I didn't go see it. Tonto never walked around with a dead bird on his head. What a disgrace to Tonto. But anyways, every Lone Ranger TV would start out him saying, hi ho silver, AG is silver. And that's the name of his horse. Guy got good feelings now going through my body about the Lone Ranger. But back to chemistry. So on a test, I can ask you, give the two points or one point. Give the chemical symbol for copper, Cu. I could ask, give the chemical symbol for mercury, Hg. I could ask, give the chemical symbol for carbon, C. Or I could also ask one or two points each on a test. Here's the chemical symbol. What's the name of that element? I could put Al, aluminum, Ni, nickel, Fe, iron, any of these. Uranium is U, plutonium, and all these, and nitrogen. There are only 37. And by the way, you can say, thank you, Dr. White. You're not making me memorize all 103. No, you don't have to. But that's the real world. These are the ones you will use in your life, I use in my life. By the way, when I was in grad school, I used a lot of argon gas AR. And these are elements I've used in the chemical industry, most of them, not all, because I'm an organic chemist, but I know them. And you should know them. Now, important tip, and I see a chat question. By the way, if you have to leave early, always feel free to, because you can pick up what you miss on my video, which I'll post by tomorrow morning or noon at the latest. All right, so you're not gonna learn this the night before a test. You should start learning this. Now, there's some things you're gonna have to memorize. One of the things I've cut down is memorization greatly in this class. When I used to teach it before, there was a lot of memorization. Also other general chemistry I taught. And a other faculty member challenged me one time when we were talking and he taught me something. And that is on my test, should I be testing your knowledge of chemistry and your memory, or should I be just challenge uh, testing your knowledge of chemistry? I came to the realization that it should just be chemistry. Now, if you go to the lecture section and scroll down, you'll see test number one, test number two, test number three, test number four, important information and final exam. I didn't have it open. And if you see on your screen, the last page of test number one has this information, which students have to memorize. You don't have to anymore, because I'm gonna give it to you. I will teach you and you do have to learn how to use this stuff, but this is stuff students would have to memorize, like these formulas right here, degrees F equal 1.8 times degree C plus 32, you don't, you do have to know how to memorize it, but there is still some memorization. Now, I have found the best way for me personally and for students to memorize it is let's do this. 
say you have to know what's the name of the chemical symbol, the element with C, and that's carbon. And if you write down C and say carbon again, C, and this you have to on your own, carbon, and do it about four or five times, then another day do it two, another three or five times, it's going to be burned into your brain. Now, you can use flashcards, and I'll be honest, for me, flashcards never work. They just never did. This repetition works. It burns it into your brain real good. Now, is that a lot of work? Yeah, but it pays off. So that's your choice. But if you want to get a good grade, you need to know these, like I said, hint. You need to know these 37, and you should know what's the name and the chemical symbol for these. Like CA is calcium. Remember, you need calcium for strong bones and things like that. All right, ooh, important stuff. Let's talk about the states of matter. And we're talking about what we call the physical states. And look, I even wrote on the slide, hint, know this. Now, the first state of matter is a solid. And you should know, hint, that a solid has definite shape and definite volume. You learn some personal things. Above my shelf here, I have some stuff I like to look at. I like eye candy. And this is above, it's in its holder. Can you guess what my favorite color is? My ring, this, this is not my birth style. Red, yep, you guessed right. Now, this sphere has definite shape and definite volume. It's not gonna change. If we wait five minutes, which we won't, but if we did, I hold it up again, it has the same diameter and the same volume, which I could measure. It's a solid. Yep, it's a solid. And you should know a solid has definite shape and definite volume. Next, a liquid. A liquid has indefinite shape. What's that? I'll explain that in a second. And definite volume. The material water in this bottle is a liquid. If I measured the volume, I know what the volume is. Now, what do we mean by indefinite shape? Well, notice how it takes the shape of the bottle. If I were to pour this into a glass, which I don't have, because I got the fancy sports top on the bottle, it would take the shape of the glass. By the way, if you ever happen to see someone selling square glasses, let me know. For some reason, I would like to have a set. But the liquid takes the shape of the container, but still has a definite volume. And the last physical state of matter you should know is a gas. And you should know a gas has indefinite shape and indefinite volume. Well, indefinite shape means it takes the shape of the container it's in. What about indefinite volume? That means it fills up the whole space. If I were in my office, by the door, if I walked in here and opened up a vial with, I don't know, the scent of a rose, or if I was mean, the scent of a skunk, eh, no, I won't. It would fill up the whole room, and you could walk after a little while anywhere in my room, and you could smell the scent of a rose. By the way, when you smell a rose, you're smelling chemicals. So I told you, chemistry is everywhere. And it fills it up. So a gas, like the air we're breathing, yep, I'm still breathing. But I said I had a sense of humor, so that was bad. Oh, sorry. But anyways, 
it fills up the whole area. Now, if we were face to face in a classroom, and I've done this numerous times, I'd say, all right, class, everybody, together with Dr. White. And if you're at home, you can do this. You don't have to turn on your mic. What are the three states of matter? Everybody, together with me, solid, liquid, gas. And I'd tell the class, oh, that was awful. Come on, we're feeling everybody together. What are the three states of matter? First one, solid. Second one, liquid. This would be on the screen in the class so they could see this. And the third one, gas. And notice, Hint, you should know this. And if I type it on a slide, you really know you should know it. And you should know a solid has definite shape, definite volume. A liquid has indefinite shape, definite volume. And a gas has indefinite shape and definite volume. And when you're going around your daily life today or tomorrow, you can look at things and say, ooh, that's a solid, that's a gas, that's a liquid. Now, when we talk about matter, there are two types of matter, pure substances and mixtures. Again, when we talk about matter, there are two types of substance or matter pure substances and mixtures. And remember, I got a fast mouse wheel and everything you see on your screen right now that's typed out is available in chapter, secretly named Chem 1105, chapter one. And that's in the lecture folder of Blackboard. If you have problems finding anything, that I say you should be able to find on Blackboard, email me and I'll help you out or come to my office hour or see me after a lecture. Now, what's a pure substance? That's something, and I won't ask you what's the definition of a pure substance, but you should know examples, which I'll talk about in a second. It's a type of matter that has a fixed or definite composition. And it's composed of only one type of atoms or molecules. So I'll never ask on a test, what's a pure substance? But I will ask, can you give an example of a pure substance? And what would be an example of that? Well, my gold ring here, that's a pure substance. Water, which I'll teach you later on, has the chemical formula H2O, is a pure substance. Silver is a pure substance. Another example, you're breathing oxygen gas, which is O2. And oxygen gas is a pure substance. So there are many pure substances. And they're always, uh, well, let's do one more. Well, I already did this one. AG, you should know, hopefully as soon as possible, that's silver. If you notice, I've mastered, I have a very nice tablet that I got a couple of years ago. And if you need to know about it, I can teach, email me. I got it on Amazon. They're about $80 and they're really good. Because you're seeing me write just like if I were on a whiteboard in a classroom. Oh, by the way, important question. You can always feel free to ask, what was that you wrote? Even though I try and write clearly. All right. Now, when we talk about pure substances, examples are elements and compounds. And I'll never ask you name the two types, but elements like I just had, say, gold, 
crossed over carbon are elements, compounds, water. I'm going to write H2O again. When I think of water, I instinctively write H2O, water. Now, have you ever gone to a forest preserve and used the hand pumps and the water smells stinky? Or have you ever smelled the stinky part of hard boiled eggs? My sister, older sister hates them. I like hard boiled eggs, even though when I was young, I didn't because I didn't. And that's this molecule, hydrogen sulfide. And I won't ask you to know this, but I'll teach you some stuff about your everyday life. That's the stinky stuff. Things with sulfur in it as are stinky. And those are compounds. Oh, here's another compound you should know. The white stuff that you put on your French fries and your doctor tells you not to have too much in your diet because it's bad for your blood pressure is table salt, sodium chloride, NaCl. Now, if you ever go out to breakfast, lunch, or dinner with a bunch of chemists like me, and I have to admit, I've been guilty of doing this many times, somebody will say, can you please pass the NACL? NaCl, NACL. Uh, that went over like a lead balloon. But anyways, we do that. So these are the two types of pure substances. I'll never ask you what are they, but you should know examples of elements and compounds. Oh, another compound, which I already talked about, that's oxygen gas. And nitrogen gas, these are the two main components of the air you're breathing. But you never thought when you're inhaling, you're inhaling a gas. It's a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen gases, and that's chemistry. Now, elements, which I'll never ask on a test, but I'll use the term in class, are pure substance that consists of only one type of atom. And later on, I think it's chapter three, I'll teach you what's an atom. And a pure substance cannot be broken down into simpler substances by chemical or physical means. If you have gold, you can't break it down into anything else, like my gold ring. Again, I'll never ask you this definitions, but you should be aware of it. Oh, it's time for a commercial from Dr. White. You should learn the chemical symbols. So I told you I repeat things a lot. And remember, chemical symbols, which I'll never ask you, are one or two or letter abbreviations for the names of the elements, which you just learned what an element is. And only the first letter is capitalized. And the second letter, if there is one, it's lowercase. Ooh, deja vu all over again. Doesn't this look familiar? You should know this. Let's try that again. There's some dust on my tablet. Sorry about that. Everybody get the hint? Know this. You should know these 37 elements. You should know the chemical symbol and the name. H, hydrogen. O, oxygen. F, fluorine. N, E, neon. S, I, silicone. P, B, lead. N, nitrogen. P, phosphorus. These you should know. Hence. 
And I only asked you to learn 37 of them, not the whole periodic table. All right, now, remember we talked about substances and their compounds, pure substances, elements, and compounds. I'll never ask on a test, but I'll use this in class. A, pure, a compound is a pure substance that consists of the combination of two or more elements in the same ratio. Another way of saying that is it's a pure substance that can be broken down into two or more simpler substances by chemical means. I'll never ask on a test what's a compound but you should know examples of compounds. Oops, wrong color. Right color. Water. H2O is a compound. Table salt. is made up of sodium and chlorine atoms together in a molecule. Next time you see that white salad you put in your soup or when you're cooking or on your french fries or anything else you put it on, that's a compound. And the air you breathe has oxygen gas in it, O2. Not that can be confused with the element oxygen, O. Oh. And I can break down sodium chloride to sodium and chlorine. Don't try that at home, it's dangerous. Now let's talk about mixtures. Mixtures are two or more substances that are physically but not chemically combined. That means when you mix two things together, compounds or elements or whatever, they're mixed together physically, but they're still the same element or compound. And what would be an example of a mixture? I will never ask you what's the definition of a mixture, but the air you breathe is a mixture. Oh, here's a good one. The next time you go by a gas station, the gasoline is a very complex mixture. Now, Dr. White, I am from Chicagoland. I spent all my life here, except when I went to Michigan State, Michigan. And we call both stuff in a bottle or can that's carbonated, non-alcoholic, pop. And that's a very complex mixture. So when you mix things together, oh, another one, which you can make at home, if you mix salt water together, you'll have a mixture. Oh, sweeter one, sugar and water mixed together. That's a mixture. So these are all very complex mixtures. Now, normally if we were face to face, we'd have taken a 10 minute break after the first 50 minutes to, because we're on Zoom, I only do a five minute. So this is about time I'll be calling it a quiz for the day. Now, first of all, you survived your first day of chemistry. Hopefully it wasn't too painful. Second of all, I'll be posting this video by sometime tomorrow morning or late morning, if not sooner, on my YouTube channel. A link is both in my syllabus and it's also on the front part of Blackboard. Now, one of the things that I started when we went to Zoom because of COVID and it was so dangerous, people were dying, is I'm Jewish. And one of the greatest people I ever knew in my life was my mother's mother, my grandmother Greenman. What a great lady she was, really great. And whenever we'd visit her, 
and we'd leave, she'd always say in Yiddish, gang gesund. That means go and help. And since the pandemic, and it's really not totally over yet, uh, I'm getting my fourth booster later this week. And I still wear a mask because I'm in a high risk group because of my age and other things. I say, gang gesund at the end of each lecture, go and help. And I also do the following. For those of you who know the TV show Beverly Hillbillies from the 60s, it was really, it's a great show. Look on YouTube, you can see some of it. Granny at the end would always go like this, bye. And so I always end my lectures, gang gesund, goodbye. Stole that from Granny. With that, I'll say goodbye, see you tomorrow. And remember, ask questions if you have any. And for those of you who ask questions, thank you. Bye now. If you have any questions, I'll stick around for, thank you.